In today's video, I'm going to show you how to crochet these adorable little velvet bows in less than eight minutes. I know, they whip up so ridiculously quick and they don't take very much yarn, so it makes them the perfect craft show make to sell in that five to ten dollar range and also just use up some of your leftover velvet that you may have laying around. My favorite thing about these bows is they're not only so easy and so quick to whip up but they're also super versatile. You can attach them to a ponytail and make it a little hairband. You can add a clip or a bobby pin on there and make it a little pin. You could add it to a nylon newborn headband. So for the little babes on a little headband you could add it honestly to anything. You could add it to a dog collar. You could add it to a gift bag. I'm doing gifts for some of my friends for Galentine's coming up and I'm going to put a little bow on each of their little gift baskets. So anyways, I'm super excited to share with you this tutorial. My name is Cameron. If you are new here and I run my own crochet boutique called Cameron's Cute Creations and I love sharing advice with you here on YouTube all about helping you run your handmade business as well. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to whip up these adorable little bows in less than eight minutes. So if you're not subscribed already, be sure to subscribe. I post lots of videos all about helping you make more money at craft shows, but I think it's time. I know why you clicked on this video. You want to make a velvet bow. So let's dive right into the tutorial. Also be sure to watch the end of this tutorial because I do have a special surprise for you. Let's start with what you're going to need to make your adorable little velvet bow. The first thing we're going to need, of course, is some velvet yarn. I love the Bernat velvet yarn, but you can also use any other velvet yarn that you have or honestly any scrap yarn that you have. I just love it in the velvet. So this is the color quiet pink that I'm going to be using. It's just some leftover yarn I have from making a couple beanies. So that is what I'm going to be using to make the bow today in this tutorial. And of course, you're going to need your crochet hook. I'm using my 6.5 millimeter crochet hook. This one is a furls hook. Look how beautiful it is. And I I'm actually an affiliate with furls, so if you want to buy your own furls hooks, I highly recommend them. They're ergonomical, really comfortable grip, and they're my favorite hooks ever. I will put my affiliate link in the description box down below if you want to go check them out. But any 6.5 millimeter crochet hook will do for this quick tutorial. You'll also, of course, need a pair of scissors just to trim our ends, and you may need a tapestry needle as we're weaving an end slash finishing off the product. I will show you a little Little bit more details on how to do that here at the end. Anyways, you may want a tapestry needle as well. Let's get started with the tutorial. So the first thing we're going to do is take our yarn and start with a slip knot. Now we're going to make a chain of 40 stitches. So yarning over, pulling that through, doing a chain, two, we're going to do this 40 times. I'm going to do the rest of my chain and then I'll meet you when I get to the end and I'll show you what the next step is. 39 and 40. There I have my chain of 40. To give you an idea of how long my chain is, it's not so Super duper important with this pattern, but if you are curious, the chain measures to about 15 inches. So you can either do a chain of 40, or if you wanna go by my measurement, it was about 15 inches. Now we're gonna be working back into our chain, working a half double crochet slip stitch. Now the half double crochet slip stitch is kind of what it sounds like. It's actually a mix between the half double crochet and a slip stitch. If you've worked on any of my other velvet patterns before, you probably already know this stitch. It's my favorite one to work with, with this velvet yarn, just because it tends to hold Hold really really well and we want to make sure if we're selling our products that it's holding really well and of course even if we're keeping them or gifting them that our velvet is holding together so what we're gonna do is start with yarning over we're gonna insert our hook in the second chain from the hook right here then we're going to pull up a loop now if we were doing a half double crochet, we would yarn over again and pull through all three of these. But we're doing the half double crochet slip stitch, which means we're actually taking this loop that we just pulled up and pulling it through the other two we already have on our hook. I'll demonstrate that stitch a couple more times for you. So we're going to yarn over, insert our hook into the next chain, pull up a loop,
We're gonna continue pulling that same loop we just pulled up through the other two we have on our hook. Another way I like to explain this stitch is you think of doing a slip stitch, which is inserting your hook, pulling up a loop and pulling through everything you have on your hook. That is also what we're doing here, but we're yarning over first. So yarning over, inserting our hook, pulling up a loop, and that loop goes through actually everything we have on our hook. So that's just another way to visualize the stitch and learn the stitch is yarning over, inserting your hook, and just doing a slip stitch with everything that you have on your hook. One more time, that's yarning over, inserting your hook, and pulling that loop through everything you have on your hook. We're gonna work the half double crochet slip stitch on each chain across this row, and we're gonna end up with a total of 39 half double crochet slip stitches. So let's do that. I'm now on the last chain where I'm gonna work my 39th half double crochet slip stitch into that last chain. Now we are going to chain one and turn our work. Sometimes I like to kind of pull this a little bit because once in a while, especially if you're using tight tension, this will kind of almost crinkle up or cinch up. So I like to just kind of give it a little tug. And now we're going to work back into this row that we just made, that first row. We're gonna work back into it, working those half double crochet slip stitches. So that again is yarning over inserting our hook into the next stitch. Now here's where it can get a little bit tricky with this stitch. Sometimes there's confusion on if this is the stitch that you go through right here, but really this little bar here at the front, it almost creates this false stitch right here. What you want to do is actually rotate your row towards you and then you'll start seeing those true V stitches. So that right there is gonna be what we're working through. And we're actually going to avoid this bar. I'll stick my hook through there just to, so you can visualize it. This bar in the front, we're leaving that because actually by leaving that, it creates this really pretty texture. And as you can see, that is the bar that we have left and we didn't work through it. And instead we worked through right here, that V stitch. So just, uh, just a little reminder there that we're working through the V stitch like normal in both loops, but uh, yeah, it looks like you're work gonna work through there, but again, tilt it towards you and you'll be able to see that V stitch and we avoid that and work through that V stitch. And again, we're working the half double crochet slip stitches. So yarning over, inserting our hook, pulling up a loop through everything we have on our hook. Again, just so you can get a better idea of where I'm working through that little bar right there, we're avoiding that and we're actually working behind it in that normal V stitch, yarning over and pulling through everything on our hook. So I'm going to continue to half double crochet. We're gonna have a total of 39 stitches again at the end of this row. We're not doing any increases, any decreases. I told you this is a very, very easy and quick pattern. So we're just gonna work all the way across this row and I will meet you when I get at the end of this second row. 38. And 39 in that last stitch. Now that we're at the end of row two, we're going to chain one and turn our work. There we go. That is two rows done. Now row three is our last row and it is actually worked the exact same way row two was worked. So we are working half double crochet slip stitch into each stitch across this row and that is going to be our last row and then I'm going to show you how to fasten off your bow and also how to tie the perfect bow. So I will meet you at the end of this row. Again, we're just working that half double crochet slip stitch a total of 39 times across row three. I'll see ya at the end of row three.
37, 38, and 39. We just made it to the end of our third and final row of the bow. So what I'm gonna do, row of the bow, row of the bow. So what I'm gonna do is leave a little short tail here and I'm just going to fasten off. So on one side of your bow, you're going to have no ends. And then on the other side of your bow where we just fastened off, you will see we have the end where we just fastened off plus where we got started. Now with velvet, it is really tricky to weave in your ends. You can definitely give it a go, but I'm gonna show you what I like to do in order to keep this as secure as possible, especially since I will be selling these in my shop. So what I'm gonna actually do, if you have a tapestry needle, you can do this, or if you don't have a tapestry, needle. I'm just going to take this strand and kind of pull it in the center here. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this end. So now we have them right next to each other with maybe a stitch, a row in between. But uh, now our two tails are closer to each other. And what I like to do is actually tie three really, really tight knots. And this is going to secure it much better than weaving in your ends. I like to do this with all of my products that I sell. Sometimes I'll weave in the ends and then do this. So you could actually weave in your ends to more of the center. And that would probably actually hide your knot a little bit better. But I'm going to show you what I like to do. And I really honestly don't notice it. So what I'm gonna do is do three super duper tight knots. So the first one I don't do super tight. The second one I do, so I pull that pretty tight. Now you don't wanna pull it too tight cause this yarn will snap on you. And then we are going to finalize it with one more super tight knot. Once I'm done with that, tip for you, if you haven't watched my last video, you can go check it out. I do have some additional tips for fastening off and working with velvet yarn, but what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna trim this here, but you can add a dot of fabric glue before tying those knots, which would help secure it even more, but I've never had an issue without using the glue, but if you want to add some additional security, you definitely can. There is our super teeny tiny knot. Now you might have a little fluff that's coming out from it, which is totally normal with the velvet. But what I'm gonna show you is a little trick. I'm going to take my lighter and I'm actually going to ever so slightly burn the little edges of my knot. That's actually going to help secure your knot and it's gonna help prevent additional shedding. I don't know about you, but I really can't even tell. I mean, I can tell right there, but sometimes what I'll do is I barely like kind of tuck in the knot. It doesn't completely stay there, but hey, like that's pretty good, right? That's pretty good for velvet. And if you do see your knot and it's a bit more visible, again, you can leave longer strands and weave them in until you get to the center, tie your knot there, and you won't even be able to see it because it will be on the backside of your bow anyway. So don't stress about it too much um, fastening off. I know fastening off with velvet can be stressful, especially when you're selling your products. This is what I like to do. Now for additional security, you could weave in a couple more stitches and then tie an additional other knot. And I may end up doing that actually. I will probably test this out and see how it holds, but I've done this before on other products and it's held just fine for me. But again, um, if you need additional security, you have options, but I definitely recommend if you weave in your ends or not to uh, tie knots, whether you do weave in your ends, so doing it after you weave in your ends or just doing just the knot. So again, you can barely even tell or see. So now I'm gonna actually show you how to go from this to this, tying the perfect little bow, because honestly, it's, it's kind of difficult. And I found this tutorial on YouTube and it was super helpful. So I will definitely link it down below. It was a YouTube shorts video. I'm gonna show you how to do the perfect little bow. So what you wanna do is actually in your left hand, lay this end down flat in your hand like this. And then you're going to want to secure it with your fingers down like this. We are gonna take the rest of the bow and we're going to go around our thumb and we're gonna stick out our pointer finger and go around behind our pointer finger and back towards the front. Now we're gonna take this and go back behind here and pull it underneath those. 
Now we're going to go up and we're going to go through here and here. So we're going to go up and go through there and tuck it in through there as well. Pull it nice and tight. And then we're going to flip it. And sometimes this gets like a little wonky here, but we flip it and there we have a perfect little bow. So that's how I've been liking to tie my bows and that way they're a little bit more even. But so there's a quick little tutorial on how to make the bow all perfect. But again, I will link that video where it goes through a bit slower and walks you through a bit slower on how to do the bow. It is kind of hard to explain in that video, it makes it quite a bit easier. But anyways, you can also just tie your bow like you normally would, or if you have another hack on how to get a perfect perfect bow, but I found that video to be super helpful. So yeah, this is what they look like. You can definitely play around with adding an elastic to the bow, tying your bow around an elastic so you can add it to your hair. You can also add an alligator clip to the back of them as well, or you could add one to these adorable little nylon baby headbands. So you can have little newborn headband bows with these adorable bows as well. And again, the possibilities are endless. Feel free to attach these to other projects, attach them to gift bags, and just do whatever you want with these adorable little bows. I hope you enjoyed the pattern and I cannot wait to see what you make with them. Isn't your bow just the cutest thing ever? I've been obsessed with making these on repeat recently and I cannot wait to sell them at my shows this year. But if you remembered at the beginning of this video, I said I had a special surprise for you at the end. And the special surprise is I actually made this pattern into a free PDF download. All you have to do is click the link in the description box and you can download this pattern for free. I wanted to do this because I know a lot of us, we like to learn with a tutorial, but then when it comes to prepping for a market, it's really nice to refer back to a pattern. And so I just decided, hey, I'll write up this quick, easy pattern for you in PDF form. And it is free for you down in the description box down below. So go ahead and click that link, download your free PDF pattern. Now that you know how to make them, you can refer to the PDF pattern anytime you wanna make these for your upcoming shows or sell online or just add to gifts. It's just a super fun make, super quick, and I cannot wait to see the ones that you decide to make, what colors you decide to make. And if we're not friends on Instagram yet already, I would love to be friends with you. Here is my Instagram handle. Send me pictures and tag me in your adorable little bows and I cannot wait to see what you make. If you're ready to make another velvet yarn project, I'm gonna send you to this video right here where I teach you how to make these adorable velvet wristlets. They are so cute. They sell so well in my markets. It's another great way to get through some of your leftover scrap velvet that you don't know what else to do with and use it in a product that's functional and you can actually sell in your shop. So thank you so much for hanging out with me in today's video. I hope you love the tutorial and I will see you, my friend, in this video right here. Bye!